Living in the 21st century, with all our scientific progress and all, all our technological advances, we should count ourselves lucky that we live in this age of rationality in which we have overcome an awful lot of the superstitious mindset that humanity was plagued with in more ancient times. And we don't even have to go back that far in time in order to see good examples of this. We only need to go f as far back as what is now known as the Middle Ages, and that has deservedly earned itself the moniker of the Dark Ages. Dark in the sense that reason during those dreadful centuries was eclipsed by superstition and a tyranny of the Christian belief system, at least in Europe it was. For example, the other day I was looking at a Mappa Mundi, which is an old medieval version of a map of the world, but of course in that day and age cartography wasn't what we know it as. Uh, a medieval Mappa Mundi, and I'm going to try and get an image of that in order to show it here somewhere, um, and if that's the case you will be seeing it over there, there's the Mappa Mundi, and if not I will be pointing into uh, empty air. Yes. Anyway, anyway, the Mappa Mundi that I looked at, and it depicts the Earth and it depicts Jerusalem in the center as the medieval people will want to do. And towards the edges of the map, you are going towards those unknown territories of the Earth, and there would be depictions of all sorts of fantastical beings, such as people who had only one foot and if they lay down the foot would come up and it would shield them from the sun. And for example people with dog heads were one of the examples of what was shown on that Mappa Mundi. Now of course nobody had ever seen such a creature because such creatures don't actually exist, but nobody thought to answer to ask any questions about this and um, it was simply taken as given that such creatures actually did exist in faraway lands and the medieval people thinking about such things would then get engaged in all sorts of philosophical discussions about whether such creatures were actually human or not. And that's where it's getting interesting. Because it shows that the medieval mind may not necessarily been, have been as primitive and as superstitious and as stupid as we would like it, as we would like to believe it is, as we would like to depict it as, looking at it from this um, enlightened position that we f fancy ourselves to be in, looking at the medieval mindset. And, of course, it is very easy to point at the gullibility of people who thought that such creatures did exist somewhere in, in the world and who didn't bother to ask questions. But on the other hand, how would somebody living in a medieval town somewhere in the center of Europe ever have been able to mount an expedition to some faraway land to confirm or refute the claim that such creatures were actually there. So I wouldn't be too harsh on what those people ended up believing about what might exist somewhere far away. And instead I would ask you to strip away the gullibility. Strip away the amusement at how these people ended up believing such silly things about what existed somewhere else in the world. And let's just look at the arguments, the philosophical discussions that these people were having about those dog-headed people, for example. And it gets very interesting then. If we strip away our amusement 
at the fact that they are arguing about things that don't exist. But if we just look at the bare bones of what they were arguing about, then it gets interesting. Because they were arguing, after all, about beings that were, in their eyes, similar to human beings, but not human beings. And then they would ask themselves, should we treat, treat such beings as human beings or as mere animals? And again, we can look at the arguments that are being proposed and scoff at them, because a lot of these arguments would center around concepts such as, are, do these creatures have human souls and are they eligible for salvation? And we can laugh at that because of the supernatural nonsense that is implied in people asking such questions. But again, let's strip that away and let's look at what they're actually asking. And they are asking questions such as, can non-human entities ever be treated as a person? And that is an interesting question that is even relevant today. Not only, of course, in the very unlikely event that aliens appear from outer space and suddenly set foot on our Earth and we'd have to deal with the fact that there are intelligent beings from somewhere else now suddenly interacting with us, but even because we are on the brink now of creating artificial entities, artificial beings based on computer science and we could be 5, 20, 100, 200 years away but it looks like it's coming. Mechanical entities that are complex enough to possibly warrant the label of personhood. And then, how do we deal with such creatures? How do we engage with such beings? What rights do we give them? What obligations do they have to us and to the rest of, well, humanity? We'd have to think of a new word, don't we? And people back a thousand years ago were thinking about such questions. Not really that primitive, is it?